months friends it's going to be almost 10 months we are all living with this pandemic and almost forgotten what is to take a vacation what is to travel to new places so to pep up myself in this scenario i was going through the photos of my travels and i was reminded of a talk i gave last year early last year to a group of professionals on my concept of slow traveling what do i mean by slow traveling is to wherever we are going it's not going to go to exotic places but wherever you go do you take the time to stop and observe and see the beauty of a rose smell it have a conversation carry memories over the decades it's not that i have i'm a professional traveler or i have traveled to numerous number of places but i've traveled quite a bit what i've learned is the the memories and the experiences we carry in the travel of course not all the travel that's what is more important than the bucket list of places that i have seen when i say slow travel it doesn't mean adventurous you don't need to jump from a parachute or you don't need to climb mount everest you don't need to even go to the base camp of mount everest some of my friends have done that's not slow traveling that's you can you can also do that slowly but my concept of slow traveling is for more average people like you and me who have a job who have other things to do who can't take uh, months after months to do something go and stay somewhere but still you don't want to do the the checklist of places just go again go one day take a tour and see all the places in a city and say you've been through that it's not about that it's not about adventure it's not about staying there it's not about trekking it's not about many of the other things what it is about is wherever you decide to go take the time to study the place and then when you go if you're not if there are 10 places to see see three places but see them properly spend time don't hurry up don't jump from one one exhibition to another or one show to another just to be on time and catch the best seat it's not about that i started traveling outside india around 1998 that was uh, 50 years of indian independence and the british airways gave a huge discount to go to london i just started doing business a couple of years outside out of college and i started my business not having cash but still this was too good an offer to miss so i went to uk i went to london saw the place it was quite fascinating for a young uh, kid in his 20s to get out of the country and travel all by himself was really fascinating a great experience but for me more was the historical significance of the the british who came and ruled us for 200 300 years to see their place how they have, they could have lived how they are living now those stories that was really interesting to me and what you see on the picture is national railway museum in york which is uh, told to be the birthplace of railways so there you have a you have a train system you have a station that you can operate you should take your kids there it's a wonderful experience for them to play with all those signals really uh, get in touch physically with these uh, devices so i had wonderful experience in that uh, museum of course uh, the other good memories i have of those trip was edinburgh one side of the main street in edinburgh scotland it it was a bustling metropolitan city on the other side it was a sleepy laid back historical city how oh, one road or one street could have these two characters uh, I, it was beyond me i still carry those images with me so i could do that because i was in no hurry i was spending like 3 to 4 days in edinburgh 2 uh, days in york and uh, more than a week in london in london so only if you have this kind of time what i call as the slow travel you can see of course if you ask me can you see uh, london edinburgh york whatever i saw in 2 days 3 days yes you can but can you carry those memories like what i did and even after 20 years will you remember them i have my doubts and when i say travel it is a slightly larger term the way i look at it travel is not about going to exotic places not even going to places like london singapore or bangkok and things like that where many of us would have gone many times it's not about that also 
It's about have you seen your city first? What's around you? Lot of things are hidden in plain sight. We don't stop. That is what I mean slow travel. So here is a photograph of the art gallery in uh, uh, Chennai Egmur Museum. What do you see are all those British generals. These portraits are almost seven, eight feet uh, tall and they are magnificent. Nobody goes to these halls. It is in the same Egmur Museum that is frequented by lots of people every day in Chennai, whoever comes to Chennai. But then they don't go to this floor because they, they say they, there's just portraits of British generals. But you should go and stand there and see these portraits of say Lord Norton or others. They just come to life. How can somebody paint these portraits? They are actually more clearer than a photograph. The expression of those people there is unbelievable. You should just stand there and see the, the medals, the gallery, the, uh, the dresses they wear. It's, it's so beautiful. That's an experience you'll miss. If you go to Ignore Museum, go to this place, see this. Not only that, there is this famous Raja Ravi Verma collections of paintings in the same museum. Many of the people just come, take a photograph, just go around it and leave in few minutes. But just see this photograph for a minute. It is the Dhamayandi from Mahabharata. See how Raja Ravi Verma has brought her emotions, her longings and the way she looks at that swan is all breathtaking. You should just spend 10 minutes, 15 minutes staring at the original painting. The photograph doesn't do justice. But if you stand there and just look at it for a few minutes, you are sure to be transported. There are other pictures of uh, Raja Ravi Varma, a girl under a tree and a girl in the mirror. Those are, again, each of them uh, to do justice, you need to spend at least an hour standing in front of them, just seeing, nothing else. It could be meditative, I suppose. And in the same Egmore Museum, a couple of uh, years back, they conducted a, an exhibition of all the collections of historical musical instrument. The one you see is an instrument uh, told in Sangam poetry in uh, Tamil called Yard. This is 2000 years old. There are different types of Yard. Unbelievable. You have a, a Sengoti Yard. You have Yerudu Yard. Yerudu is your uh, bullock. And you have your fish yard and peacock yard. So many. I'm just taking four pictures, but there, I suppose there were more than a dozen. And each of them, it's un, it's worth seeing the craftsmanship that's gone into each one of them. And if you're just doing this museum as an item take, you won't be able to enjoy these. Again, there are many things around us. Where many, many people, even I have gone to many times to a triple cane area near the uh, famous Marina Beach in Chennai. I haven't been to the famous Tamil poet and the freedom fighter Bharadiya house. I didn't even know it. I have crossed that path for quite a few times, but I haven't stopped or even after I know I didn't stop and go inside it. But only about five, six years back when I started to follow the slow travel, I made a point. I, I once went, took a auto and went to this place. You can't take a car. It's in a congested street. You can't park. But I took an auto, just went there, spent about an hour. There's not much to see. But even to go to a place where this historic figure and the great poet lived was a very, uh, it, it transports you to a different time. And that's an experience. So which you can't get by just going around the places really fast. A similar thing I also experienced when I went a uh, few years back to uh, the former CM and a famous actor in Tamil Nadu called Dr. MGR. He, his office has been turned into a museum and all the medals and all his personal possessions have been exhibited. And one of his pride and uh, pride procession was this car. And the beauty is this car even in that day had a, had a TV inside it. So it's, it's, it's again unbelievable. And uh, you could spend an hour, hour and a half seeing the various movies, uh, posters that he has acted and all that. It actually makes you connect with that person a lot more than what you read in uh, history books. In the same lines, the, one of the very famous uh, former chief ministers of Tamil Nadu was uh, uh, Kamarajar was known for his, uh, his connection with the poor people and his humble life that he lived. And when he died, 
all they could find was just two suitcases of few dresses and probably about 100 rupees of his. That was his personal belonging, a man who was for many years one of the historic chief ministers of Tamil Nadu. This is all the belonging that he had. And the only thing that he collected was when he went to uh, inaugurations of functions where he's called as chief ministers, the scissors they give him, give it to him. He had brought it and then kept it. And that was more a, a chief minister. He never kept it as his personal belonging, but as the chief minister's belonging. And that too, they have exhibited in this house, which is now a government run uh, monument, where you can see that is all this man had. A similar thing you will also see now with Dr. Kalam's uh, museum in Rameshwaram. This man also, when he left the Rashtrapati Bhavan, when he came in, he brought two suitcases and when he went out, he went with the same two suitcases, which I was told, he showed it to everybody that this is what he had in his suitcase when he took it out. So those great personalities we have read, but to see that in action, see these two suitcases this chief minister has had, so simple. Again, it's an experience. You, you are able to connect to that person a lot more better when you take your time. And this is an area, this is about a kilometer, uh, this Kamaraja's house is about two kilometers from my house. But um, only few years back, I went to it. I have crossed through this house for many, many years, but I haven't, I haven't cared to stop and see. So when you start doing the slow travel, these are the places around you that you should stop and then go inside and see. If you're not in Chennai, say if you're in Delhi, this is a place you should go. And I'm not recommending a gold jewelry shop here. Okay. This is the beautiful Rajasthani royal jewels that queens and princesses in Rajasthan in the 19th century wore. And it's exhibited in the National Museum in Delhi. So if you are in Delhi, go to this museum. If not for anything else, at least to see the jewelries. Okay. Then in Delhi, Three, four years back when a cousin of mine he is studying abroad, when he came back to India, I, uh, he called me and said, uh, why don't you come to Delhi? Many years I've gone to Delhi for my work and uh, personal reasons to meet relatives and all that. But then I've never gone to Delhi as a sightseeing tourist. So I called up my cousin. I said, you need to take the next five, six days and then show me around Delhi patiently as a native will like to see it. And one of the first places he took me is the Chandni Chok market in a busy evening. And that itself was an experience to go through the crowd, to see the different shops. For somebody coming from Chennai, seeing this North India experience, seeing the shops there, uh, seeing the smell, the sights, the color, and it was a festival season. So it was very good. And the, and the experience we, the experience I cherish was the cup of tea we had in one of the local shops, tea shops there. That's the cup you see. Three of us who traveled along, a friend of my cousin and uh, my cousin and myself. That tea was so tasty, so strong, so nice. And I could still, as I'm talking and seeing this picture, I could still, still feel the taste of that tea in my tongue. And Changri Chok is not a touristy spot that you have to go. If you go on your own, you may not be enjoying it. You should take a native to come along with you and then tell you about the sites and to bargain with the locals and buy it. It's that's an experience. And uh, it's not National Museum in New York is great. There is a National Rail Museum in our own Delhi. And there are rails you can get in, you can photograph, you can experience them. And there is also a lot of history, like the way the Gandhi's um, uh, strikes against the British and many of them, Gandhi used to travel all across the country, mostly by train. And we all know the famous Gandhi's experience in South Africa. So trains are always connected with our history. So this is a National Rail Museum and uh, that was a good place. We had a couple of hours there. A lot of ice I could see when I was there. People just coming in and finishing the old museum in about 30-45 minutes. But again, to do justice to it, you should spend at least half a day there. There's lots to see. How many of us stop and read those title cards kept in each of those exhibits? That is what you will have to do to get a real experience. And it's not about only places and cities. It's not about going to Delhi, Bombay, Bangalore, Hyderabad to see. 
a few years back many of us in our family we decided uh, to go to tanjore for a reason because my father in law ails from tanjore but of course he has lost connection to that city uh, as he studied after his school and uh, college he then came to chennai uh, became a lawyer and uh, other things but then all of us about 20 of us in the family we said let's go to tanjore and see the place where my father in law had studied the school the bottom one you see is the school he studied and the top one is the college he studied and it's surprising some of the classrooms that he studied even after like 50 years still a uh, survey when what was very memorable for us was not these brick buildings and the thing as we went to these places and the principals in both the institutions were kind enough to allow a kind of a rowdy and noisy 20 member family across age groups walking in on a on a working day to a school and a college but the principal was so nice they said please come in the lunch time and you can go around the place in both the cases what is memorable to us was as we entered the place my father in law remembered so much of his childhood stories that otherwise he probably wouldn't have even showed shared it to his daughters or remembered and that he shared to all of us and that's a memory we'll always carry uh, with us and his grandsons and granddaughters really loved to hear their uh, their grandpa talking about his school days and uh, similarly many years back we went to my mother's native place in trichy and the house you see on the crumbled house you see on the left is where she and 10 of her siblings uh, grew up and uh, here again uh, my uncles uh, who had come along with me they were sharing many of the stories that happened how my grandpa uh, struggled to raise all these kids and then give them a good education and get them married and all that so each of the room for each of the rooms they had a story to uh, share so these are things and this is not a must go place if you think about it and there is nothing other than uh, uh, Srirangam being a temple town for itself thousands of pilgrims go every day but then this is this building doesn't carry any significance for anybody else but for us from the family it carries a lot of significance and that you have to make an effort of going there and spending the time uh, to enjoy these uh, these sites and I kept repeating about experiences and stories. I think that's what slow travel is all about. It's not about the number of uh, places you go. It's not about number of pictures you take. It's not about the number of shows that you have attended. It's not the, uh, the front row seats that you have got. It's the stories that you hear and you experience. So we'll see some of them that's happened for me in a few of my travels. In 2010, about 10 years back, when my son was in probably six or seven years, we went to Hong Kong, a usual vacation trip, but we spent seven days in Hong Kong. That's, you ask anybody who has gone to Hong Kong, it's it's lot more than what you can actually do in Hong Kong, but we wanted to see the place slowly. So we spent out of, we spent four days in um, um, Hong Kong and uh, we also spent on, uh, went to the nearby islands and all that, but we decided to spend two full days in Disneyland. Disneyland typically you can finish in a day but we all we spent two full days we went on day one and night and stayed in a resort in Disneyland and day two day three we were there. The idea was so we could go to each and every ride in our own pace. We don't need to run from one show to another one ride to another and since we had a small kid we were not taking the uh, I'm scared about roller coasters, so we didn't take the roller coasters and all that. So we took all the other rides patiently. My son liked some of the rides, so we went twice to some of the rides. But the thing is, on day three, as we were leaving for our, uh, sorry, day four, as we were leaving to our uh, catch our flights, we were just doing last minute uh, shopping and we just turned around and we couldn't see our son. He had just vanished and he was nowhere to be seen. And uh, the time was running out for us to catch our flight. And uh, here we have our son missing. It's a huge Disneyland. We didn't know what to do. And the next two hours, we were running everywhere in Disneyland when my wife smartly asked one of those um, helpers there. And they said, no, in, no kid in Disneyland can run without a parent beyond few feet. And we would have got them just go to the childcare. And we went to the childcare. There he was. But the first thing he asked us is, what took you so long? And that's a story with myself and my wife, we still carry with ourselves. We got so scared in our life 
but then by when we saw his face he said what took you so long and uh, it was priceless this is uh, one of the we have many of us would have gone to singapore but i have gone to singapore many many times my uncle lives there and i also used to go to singapore to transit to when i used to go to the us but i've never been to asian civilization museum only about 7 8 years back a friend of mine recommended and went there i think that's if you want to do this slow travel if you want to really understand singapore the asian civilization you should go to this place it's one of the best kept secrets of singapore in my opinion and singapore itself is a small island there is not much of history to them um, uh, beyond uh, the british but then they took all the history from asia and then seem to have collated them beautifully and given it a singapore uh, touch but that's not what i'm talking here the the first time when i went here i was just going around and here in the same spot as i was standing and i you didn't have those i probably was not carrying a, a powerful uh, cellular uh, cell phone i was carrying a camera and i needed somebody to help me to take a photo so i just approached this uh, american uh, looking gentleman and uh, i just asked him can you take a picture of me he took a picture but then he gave me a sermon for the next 30 minutes that i still remember okay i just started talking to him and he said so many things and it turned out he was a physicist working in a very popular university in the us he's retired of course and a lot of things he told but the thing that still stuck with me i uh, i told i shared my name he shared his name and all that so he said venkat have you thought about this fact that all of us each one of us all those people who lived before us what we see them and all these belongings that we see historic belongings and the modern equipments that you are carrying this camera your money yourself myself all of us are made out of the same atoms that were created 4 billion years back in the big bang if you think about it it is true <laughs> we are all from the same atoms those atoms could have morphed don't go into the he explained it later but i'm making the old story very simple but then it, i took it as a philosophical uh, message as well one was science but then it was more philosophical uh, as well and this i wouldn't have got the experience if i didn't ask him to take it there's a chance happening but then i was just smiling and asking him to take a photograph and then asking him started the conversation of asking him where he is and then that led to all this a similar experience when we went to uh, kandy in uh, sri lanka this is the famous tooth temple where buddha's uh, holy tooth is kept and we and this gentleman uh, you see on the uh, right hand side bottom was our guide and the man is born and brought up in kandy he really loved the place he has so much to share with us and he asked us two questions that he and he answered it later i'll also ask those questions and leave it for you to think he asked us can you name 100 words in english which don't have the letters a b c d okay 100 words that don't have the letters a b c d and then he said just like india sri lanka was also ruled by british lot of historic uh, stories from british but he said two things that british brought to us the subcontinent where we are much better and we are the leaders in that now than the british again i leave for you to think on these two questions so our guide the gentleman asked these two things and after the whole tour is over he told us the answers and it, more than the place which is a holy a great experience by itself uh, to see the holy relic of lord buddha but then i still carry the story this image of this gentleman explaining that to us with the passion and that's what all this travel i think is worth meeting these people hearing their stories this is uh, again a few years back i i pestered a good friend of mine who lives in bombay but who was from indore to take me to indore because he was always posting all these tasty food photographs and the next 4 days we went on a food tour in indore with absolutely no worries from morning till evening we were just eating but we were eating portions we'll buy one small portion and then three of us we went we'll share so that we are not full because we have to go to three other place for a breakfast 
and each and every place because the gentleman who came along with us was a native of Indore. He had stories to say about each about every shop. So this one you see on the right hand uh, side was made by an elderly gentleman. He runs a store only for poga in the mornings in that Chapan area in uh, Indore. And these pogas are covered in NDTV, covered in all the media. Even the famous chef Sanjeev Kapoor is told to have come there and eaten this poga. It was so tasty. And, and the story there of this grandfather coming in every day from say 6 to 8 o'clock putting this stall and it runs out after that 8 o'clock and that's and that is something you have to go there. It's not about the poga but it's about the the love in which that gra grandfather actually served is what makes that old place special. The same trip we were going to a friend's farmhouse and that's the zipline you, you see on the right hand side. I'm scared about doing all these adventurous sports. My idea of my advent, my idea of travel is not to pay money to get myself scared. It's for me to ex enjoy. Okay. So this friend, he owned his farmhouse and he said, here is a zip line. Why don't you try it out? And he said, the rod, the cables I've used are 100 times more than the prescribed strength. So, and he demoed it uh, first for me. And I was so happy with that experience doing it. And when we were coming back, and uh, that's the picture you see on the left hand side. We saw a lot of potato farms, lots and lots of potatoes. So I just asked the, the, the friend who took us, can we stop there and take a photograph? And we, we, we did. So I was thinking the far farmer is going to uh, shout at us, but he was so welcoming. And when we said uh, that uh, I have come from Chennai and I just like to take a photograph, he was more than welcoming. And he in fact asked me to pluck a potato from the ground and then said please now you take a photo and he's the one who suggested this pose and for a city boy like me to pluck a potato from the field raw and then touch it and smell it and we washed it and I tasted it was an experience by itself that I no amount of any costly potato I can buy ever, anywhere will bring it uh, bring the same experience for me. And a couple of us, my friends, uh, we tra we plan to travel uh, to major festivals in the world. We have done about four or five of them around the world. And the one you see is the Boryong Mud Festival that happens in a town about 250 kilometers from South Korean capital, uh, Seoul. And here, a small field, they put mud in those bowls that you see on the right hand side bottom or in those uh, buckets that you see on the uh, left bottom and you just take these mud apply all on your face your body and then you just play there is multiple water sports there you can play by the afternoon there is mud everywhere and this people just come there from around the world and they spend about a couple of hours and go but we decided to be there for three whole days and by the second day or the third day we became veterans of the place we know when each ride opens what you can do and uh, the second day, third day and the eateries were familiar with us and we had quite a great time those three days. And the second day we thought we will get bored. But the third day is when actually we had a lot more fun because we are familiar with everything. There was no rush to just finish the rides because each of the rides we had done multiple times and each of the eateries we have eaten. So, But the third day was more about taking in the 360 degree of the smells and the, and the sound. And uh, this is, uh, we went to Holi Festival in Mathura and Vrindavan a uh, few years back. And to just to go to those temples, uh, when we went to Vrindavan, the, it was small streets everywhere leading to the temple. And it was crowded, it was packed. And then people are throwing in uh, colors and spraying. And uh, I can't imagine in this pandemic situation, I just can't imagine myself being in a place where there were thousands and thousands of people in probably one square meter area uh, like place. But then it, it was fascinating. And the picture you see on the right hand side uh, bottom is on the Vrindavan temple. And there was this balcony, a friend of mine who had come. The balcony itself was just about one feet by uh, six feet. And there were already 10, 15 people standing, each of them trying to get a photograph or get a good angle of what's happening bottom. And I was worried this balcony is going to come crashing down. 
but my friend without any care was just taking pictures after pictures and some of those pictures were lovely later but then the the time we spent there was awesome and on the way to the uh, one of the attractions we went in Mathura was we saw this uh, Gusti area uh, the uh, the local boxing arena where they were playing with this uh, um, uh, sand boxing it was a local training school and we just, just saw it from the uh, road and we decided to go in and the teacher again was so welcoming and explained to us how their sport works the, the history the centuries probably of the sport happening there and uh, he, he offered to all of us homemade tea and we spent two three hours there and all that was possible we just stopped there and asked him can you we just want to see can you show us around that's all the tea itself also was free but that's not the point it's the hospitality that he showed to us that was really valuable this is uh, in uh, Kasarakot district in Kerala two years back when we went there for the the Kerala Tayyam festival uh, we uh, we saw in Facebook one of those uh, temples and uh, we decided to go there and on the way we saw this kind of relatively small temple a Bhagavadi Amman temple in Kasarakot we decided to go there and the the temple authorities when we went to the office we just say when is your Tayyam festival can you tell us the schedule they said no we'll tell you not only tell you we'll literally host you on the next two days from morning till evening actually most of the festival happens in the late evening it starts late evening and runs through the whole night they literally hosted us and we were no one we were not any celebrities or anything we just landed up there and asked them can you tell us about this Thayam festival when is it going to happen that's all and they were so kind to us and they offered us lunch dinner in the temple simple fare uh, a rice and some um, curry and uh, that's it but uh, maybe a little sweet or a curd that's all that's for the whole uh, meal but it was so tasty and uh, the two days we spent there uh, from the late evenings to the uh, the next day uh, literally the next day morning and the festival was so good There's one after the other happening all through the night and that itself was a great uh, memorable moments uh, late last year when we were still traveling we went to the uh, run roots of the white desert festival in uh, Gujarat and uh, we did the usual things and this photograph I really like because I was asking I was just sitting on that uh, cart that uh, was pulled by a camel and we were just riding there and we got down and I just asked the driver can I pose for a photograph he said yes and I took it but the thing I really like is more than me looking at the camera look at the camel looking at me as if mocking me why are you <laughs> troubling me with the photograph I'm just a camel but then that was a good uh, moment we also went to uh, Sabarmati Ashram and uh, it was uh, it was a it was a great experience to just look at this is the place where our father of the nation Magadma Gandhi was sitting and major decisions in his life and in the in the history of India was actually taken in this very place and the letters Gandhi wrote were written in this table if you think about it and it's really fascinating we did all the usual touristy things in Gujarat but the thing that I still remember or which I cherish a lot is on the way uh, when we just got down and we were going this small shop in a place called Anjar in Kutch we just shopped small tea shop kind of place a snack shop and we just stopped and we had this dough class and believe me this is the best dough class I have ever eaten and we did eat in the next few days in the run it was a five star uh, uh, catered resort and we also ate in many uh, famous places I've also eaten dough class in Rajasthan side and I've also eaten in Chennai uh, in Delhi famous Gujarati restaurants and all that but this is the, the best dough class it was freshly made and the chutneys oh my god I can still see, feel the taste in my tongue it was so good and this was a small simple shop nobody recommended us this shop we just saw it and we just got down and we ate we of course finished a whole old days supply of class that he made but then this again is my point I'm making is stop when you see something like it oh we'll think okay next trip we'll do it that next trip believe me my friends will never come 
when you that doesn't mean you miss your flight okay so that give yourself adequate time so that you can have this serendipitous experience wherever you go you see something you like it stop it buy it or take a photograph and on the same thing these are places I've gone. One is on Thailand, uh, Phuket. Uh, uh, this one is on the Ranutsav on the left hand side. On the right you see is on South Korea Seoul on the royal uh, dress. These are places where we just go stand and photo. But many of these places offer you now for tourists to wear their local dresses, local costumes. And many of the time we don't care. It's probably paid and we don't want to pay it. We spend one lakh to go to a place but we think twice to spend a hundred rupees to take a photograph with the costume why just try it out and you're just going to wear it and many of them hygienically do it and some of them even wash it after each of those people wearing it and all that so just give it a shot and see this photograph i still remember what happened each of them the experience of i trying to get into those costumes and that's something i can still uh, remember so Coming to the last, what is slow travel? For me, slow travel is about going with family, going to places that each of the family members or one of them really value and then share that experience with others. Like my uh, mother's hometown or my, uh, my father-in-law's hometown where we went and saw things. So it's about being with family. It's about being with friends, doing stuff that you normally don't do. We are all probably, some of, many of us are boring corporate uh, people from nine to five we work and we don't uh, loosen up ourselves so this is slow travel is all about that and slow travel is all about bringing back your serenity which we need really once this pandemic gets over and we are free to travel we literally need to bring back get back our serenity and the way to do that is not to go around the world finish the entire europe in one week that's madness each city in europe needs at least a week to do justice so please don't see europe if you do that worldwide tour of europe remember to note down the place that you like and go to each one of them and spend a week or day. when we went to australia myself and my wife uh, 20 years back we spent 30 days going around australia 30 days and uluru the as rock was is the best experience we got out of the entire australia so those are things you don't get if you finish a place in a couple of days so that is what is slow travel all about for me. The famous writer Jumbal Agri, she says this, that's the thing about books. They let you travel without moving your feet. And in this pandemic times, that is, we need this. Books will be the best way for us to travel around the world and make ourselves ready so that when we are back going to places, we can cherish and we can stop and smell each and every rose that's in our uh, way. If you have the uh, the money, you can also try out VR glasses and go to these places on a VR experience, but nothing beats the real world experience. Okay, so be ready, keep your uh, checklist ready. And once the world opens up, go to all these places, spend your time and slow travel. Have a great day. Thank you, friends.